What's up YouTube? My name is Clickwood and I am back again today bringing you guys another Madden 15 Ultimate Team Budget Series video. And if you guys are new to the series, what we try to do on this series is give you some options for players who maybe are not quite as expensive as some of the really high overall players, but ones that are going to still perform very, very well for you. In some cases, we might even be able to show you some examples of players who might even be better than some of the most expensive cards in this entire game. I've really been working on trying to tell people that you don't have to spend a hundred thousand coins at every position to have a really good team in Madden 15 Ultimate Team. Now obviously if you have you know 10 million coins for whatever reason like a few of my friends do you can of course go out there and assemble the best team with the best overall players and you know you're probably gonna kick the crap out of people that have this budget squad. I get it. But the vast majority of people don't have access to that many coins. We're talking maybe a million coins, maybe in a lot of these cases. And while they might be able to have a better overall team than you, it's very possible that you can still put together a team that competes with them for significantly less coins. So that's what we're going to try to do today. And what we're going to be focused on is the center and guard positions. Now, in my previous video, I actually did one on the left tackle and the right tackle position. So go ahead back and look at my previous video on that. I'll also leave an annotation up here and uh, we'll leave a link to it in the description below. But I want to make sure, of course, that you guys understand kind of what we're looking at before we actually compare these cards. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you the attributes that I look for when I'm looking at centers and guards. So the very first thing that we're going to do is go over those. So the best way for us to do that is just to hop right into it. And we'll start off by looking at the center position. On the left hand side, you're going to see the card that I'm recommending for your budget. And then on the right hand side, you're going to see a card that I think is getting very, very overpriced. And this is kind of going to be the theme throughout the entire episode here. So. First cards that we're going to be comparing are Will Montgomery, the gold card, 83 overall, Denver Broncos center. And we're going to compare him to Dominic Riola, who is the center for the Detroit Lions. This is an elite 88 overall card. Now, green versus red that you see on your screen here. Green is going to be an attribute, obviously, that is higher than the other card. Yellow is going to be the same. And red is not as good as the other card. So I hope that makes some sense. If you compare the numbers themselves, you'll actually see that it does make sense across the board here. But again, the attributes that we want to look at here, strength, impact block, run block strength, run block footwork, pass block strength, pass block footwork, acceleration, and awareness. Now, a lot of people are going to be asking, why do we care about acceleration? I think acceleration is probably one of the lower things that we actually care about, but the reason that a lot of people ask me to include it is because a lot of times you're going to use your center and your guard and even your tackles to kind of go out and pick up blocks on screens and things like that, try and get down the field, pick up blocks on safeties, cornerbacks, linebackers, so that's kind of why we care about acceleration. So with that being said, let's compare these cards directly. The very first thing that I always look at is strength, because if my guy doesn't have good strength, he's probably going to get abused a lot of the time. So needless to say, Will Montgomery having a 94 strength versus Dominic Riola having just an 88 strength, I definitely think that goes in the advantage of Will Montgomery in a significant fashion. Then you go ahead and look at the run block strength, run block footwork, pass block strength and pass block footwork, and they are all fairly significantly in Will Montgomery's advantage. The run block attributes are not even close. Plus nine in run block strength, plus 16 in run block footwork in the in the favor of Will Montgomery. And keep in mind, guys, this card is going for 5,000 coins. Dominic Raiola, 52,000 coins on average. That is insane. There is a 10 times price gap between Dominic Raiola and Will Montgomery. It, it's it's baffling to me. I don't understand how that can possibly happen unless people are just so enamored with having elite cards on their team that they don't even look at the numbers that are associated with them. Because I'm telling you guys, look at Will Montgomery's numbers here. The only thing that he is lower in is acceleration and awareness. Yes, I understand awareness does matter, but for centers, what are they really doing? They look at the guy that's in front of them and they block him. If there's a guy blitzing, hopefully they pick up the guy blitzing. But for the most part, awareness, not really that important in my personal opinion. 
And in all honesty, my actual opinion on awareness is that I think it's the attribute that the game pretty much boosts on players to make them better because it take it is really taken into account a lot on their overall value. So you see 88 overall there for Dominic Riola. I bet if you put Will Montgomery at 97 over or, uh, 97 awareness, excuse me, you would see that his overall number is going to rise up significantly. He'd probably be an 86 and 87 overall if he had a 97 awareness. So I just think that's an overrated attribute. I don't think it's really that significant. And that's why it's at the bottom of this list. So again, I personally believe Will Montgomery will perform better for you than Dominic Riola will. So this one right off the bat is one of the best ones that you're going to see on any of these videos that I do throughout this entire series. Hope you guys take advantage of this one before the prices skyrocket on them. I, I hope that it doesn't. I hope that you guys are still able to get Will Montgomery. I know he's in a lot of packs, so it's not a super rare card. So that'll help keep the price down on him. But if you see him going for, you know, 50,000 coins suddenly, don't buy it for that. Just wait until his price goes down trust me and same thing goes for all of these cards in case they do rise up in price as they have been known to do when i put out these videos not to say that i single-handedly change the market or anything like that but sometimes people will go in there and they'll buy all of the will montgomery's that are anywhere around this price tag and they'll put all of them back up for around twice the price so you'll see the same card for ten thousand, and then people will think that that's a good price and then it ends up rising the entire price of will montgomery so try not to fall for that Try to just purchase him for 5,000 if you can. If you don't see him there, wait a little bit. Or move on to this next guy that we're going to take a look at here. And that is Nick Mangold of the New York Jets. He has been a perennial great player in this game. Uh, his center card last year in Madden 25 was one of the best centers in the game. This year, he starts off with an 85 overall center card. It's going for about 8,500 coins, which I think is a very good price for him. Uh, all honesty, I do think that Will Montgomery is a better overall center, but a lot of people complain about some of the lower overall um, awareness attributes that I have on some of these cards. So people will say, I want a card that has higher awareness. Okay, here's your opportunity for the card for higher awareness. All the other attributes are not as good as Will Montgomery, but he's better in awareness, so here you go. And also, I think he has better acceleration. But anyway, um, let's take a look at these cards here. So, Because I think this card here, Nick Mangold and Alex Mack, are very, very comparable. You're going to see that kind of across the board. The yellow, again, under strength means that they have the same number for strength. They're also very close in a lot of these other attributes. There's not a huge gap between them on most of these things. So we've got, obviously, the same on strength. The plus three for Alex Mack on impact block, which is nice to have because if he does get down there and he's hitting the linebackers and those players, uh, a lot of times he can put them on their asses, whereas Nick Mancold might not be quite as able to do that. But he does have the same in uh, essentially the same, I should say, in acceleration. Um, but then you take a look at things like the run block strength, very much in the advantage of Nick Mangold here with a plus four. Uh, three for run block strength and a plus five for run block footwork. In the pass block strength, Nick Mangold does kind of struggle a little bit. He's only an 87 under pass block strength, but he does make up for it with the 91 pass block footwork. So, you know, it's kind of it's kind of a give and take on those things. I think as far as their overall uh, run blocking, pass blocking numbers, Nick Mangold's actually better than Alex Mack. But, you know, it is what it is on that. So, uh, again, I, I just, I don't understand sometimes how these cards get so overpriced because, like I said, you look at these comparisons between these and really the only areas where Alex Mack is better is he's slightly better as an impact blocker. Uh, he's a little, quite a bit better, I should say, plus seven at a plus block strength, and then he does just have the one plus for acceleration. But other than that, he's not as good in, as Nick Mangold in anything, really. And yet he's going for, what, seven times as expensive? It's just so crazy to me. So my personal opinion is that you do want to go out there and you want to pick up your guys like Nick Mangold and your guys like Will Montgomery who can really do just the same things as some of these other players for quite a bit cheaper. So let's move on now to our next position, which is left guard. And before I really get into this too much, I want to say that left guard is one of the toughest positions to find quality players at. I had a really tough time finding guys who were even close 
to some of these top guys, to be completely honest with you. But I think I was able to at least come close with a couple of them. Uh, so these are the cars that we're going to be looking at here. Number one, we have Jonathan Cooper, who is a 78 overall left guard for the Arizona Cardinals. He's going for about 2,500 coins. And we're going to be comparing him to Josh Sitton, 87 overall. And he's going for about 50,000 coins. So a 25 times... Uh, price difference for Josh Sitton to Jonathan Cooper. Let's see if he's worth 25 times the price. So right off the bat, again, we've got strength and impact block. Now, Josh Sitton is a little bit better in strength. He does have the 92 versus the 89 for Jonathan Cooper. Where he does make a big advantage here is that he is quite a bit better in impact blocking with plus seven. But then you take a look at his run block and his pass block footwork, and they're actually behind Jonathan Cooper here. He's four behind in run block footwork, two behind in pass block footwork, and then he's 10 behind in acceleration. Jonathan Cooper with 85 acceleration is one of the fastest accelerating left guards that you're going to find in the game. Now, the big gap between these two players and the reason I think that they're their overall is nine difference is because Josh Sitton has an 87 awareness, whereas Jonathan Cooper is 63 awareness. 63 awareness is pretty brutal. I can't lie to you guys. Um, that's a real low number for an offensive lineman. It is concerning. My whole thing is, is that you should take him onto your team here for 2,500 coins. Test him out. See what you think about him because I don't really think that you're going to notice as much of a problem as you might think that you would. Um, for the most part, guards are pretty much going to line up against the guy in front of them and block the guy in front of them. There's not a whole lot of situations where they're doing something different than that. So to me, I personally think that it's not that big of a deal, but some people might have a different opinion on it. So go ahead and try him out for 2,500 coins. If you don't like him, go ahead and take the loss of 250 coins on the, on the, uh, tax, but not that big of a deal if, because like I said, you're only spending 2,500 coins. So with that being said, guys, like I said, it, guard is a little bit tougher. Um, it, it really is. I think when you look at the right guards, you're going to see that it was a lot easier. But left guard is its a tough position to fill. So it might be one of those where you might want to try and invest in a little bit more of an expensive player or possibly take a center or a tackle or a right guard potentially and place them at left guard and see how they perform for you if you don't like what Jonathan Cooper, for example, is doing. Let's look at our other left guard position here. And what I've got for you here is a 76 overall Rob Sims, and he's going to be compared to one of the absolute best offensive linemen in this game, Evan Mathis. Now, Evan Mathis, 90 overall elite card. Uh, like I said, one of the best offensive linemen that you're going to find in this game. I'm not going to try and tell you here that Rob Sims is better than Evan Mathis. He's just not. But he is better in certain areas, and where he's not as good, I don't think it's that significant. I really don't. So let's compare the two of them. So we've got strength. Rob Sims is actually better. Uh, shockingly enough, he has 90 strength versus Evan Mathis is 87. Impact block, he does fall significantly behind at an 80 versus an 88. And then the run block strength and the run block footwork. Uh, the run block footwork is really where he struggles. Um, and, and as far as I understand it, and obviously there's differing opinions on this, I would love to have an EA uh, person actually tell us the truth about this. But as far as I understand, run block and pass block footwork kind of go up head to head against the, the opposing defender's uh, finesse move. So if you have a defensive tackle that for, that for whatever reason has a great finesse move, that could be a major concern for Rob Sims. But for the most part, defensive tackles are going to be trying to do their power move, in which case they're going to be going up against his run block strength or his pass block strength, where he's actually pretty good. He does have an 86 run block strength, which isn't quite as high as Evan Mathis's 88, but he does have 10 higher in pass block strength. I was absolutely astonished to see that because he, I mean, obviously you see that he's 90 overall um, and when you see an 83 overall attribute in such a significant area like pass block strength, I, I was just surprised. But then again, I thought about it a little bit more and I was like, you know, what if they made him a 90 pass block strength? He would probably be like a 95 overall card all the way early in this early in Madden. I just don't think they're going to be out there doing that, especially not for offensive linemen. 
Now, where this card is actually kind of surprisingly good, the Rob Sims card, is that it does have a 90 awareness. So while Jonathan Cooper in the previous slide was not a good in awareness at all, he was pretty awful, Rob Sims is actually equal to Evan Mathis in awareness. So again, if you're somebody that really cares a lot about awareness, here you go. I think Rob Sims might be the card for you. Uh, I don't think he has quite as good of attributes in the other areas, but you know, he's still a pretty quality player. And again, for 2,500 coins, you just can't go wrong when you're comparing him to a guy like Evan Mathis, who has 125,000 coin price tag. I mean, it's just, it's not even close in terms of price. It's really not even in the realm of uh, consideration that you'd be able to afford Evan Mathis most likely if you're on the the budget side of things so to me Rob Sims definitely worth it for 2,500 coins give him a shot if you don't like him you lose 10% on the auction block for tax not that big of a deal on at this price tag so let's move on to our final position which is the right guard position and I think this is one where we can really take a big advantage over some of the more expensive cards in the game. Uh, like I said, I think that you might even want to consider taking to a card over here on the right guard position and maybe taking it and placing it on the left guard position. Something to think about, their awareness will drop a little bit when you do that, but I think it might possibly be worth it just based off of the numbers that you get here at the right guard position versus the left guard. So, let's look at Ushi Nwaneri, and he is going to be up against David DeCastro. Now, Nwaneri is 76 overall as a right guard, David DeCastro 88 overall as a right guard, and there's a huge price difference here. Nwaneri is uh, only 1,500 coins, for, whereas DeCastro 65,000 coins. So a huge, huge price difference here. And I'm going to tell you, I think that Nuaneri is a better card in almost every single area. So let's compare these two. Obviously, we've got the 96 strength here for Nuaneri. Now, that is an excellent number. I am absolutely astonished right now that they gave a card like this uh, that good of an attribute for strength. It's just what? I, I don't understand. Uh, and when I see something like that, I almost always look down at, at awareness immediately and I just expect it to be terrible. But it's not. 86 awareness. Not bad at all. In fact, three higher than David DeCastro. That, that one astonished me as well. And he's not only good in terms of just the, the overall strength number. If you look at his run block strength at 96, that is beastly, dude. Like, really? 96 run block strength? That is money. You are not going to find many right guards better than that. You're not going to find many cards, period, better than that. And then you look at his pass block strength, which is also higher than David DeCastro. His pass block footwork is also higher than David DeCastro. Each of those by two high. And you then you just look at the run block footwork where he's only an 85. I understand that. But look, he's only four lower in run block footwork than a card that is like 60 times as expensive as this one. I mean, my goodness, that is insane. Are you kidding me? Now, I understand, obviously, his acceleration, eight lower. That is pretty significant. And his impact block, nine lower. So he's not going to be knocking a lot of guys over. I get that. But overall, this card is absolutely ridiculous for 1,500 coins. It's one of the best budget cards that I have come across. I am absolutely in love with it. Has nothing to do with the fact that it has a Cowboys logo on it. Trust me, although Cowboys my favorite team. I have no idea who this guy was. To be completely honest with you, when I was looking through these cards, I just came across it and I was like, wow, look at those numbers. Let's start to compare this to maybe one of the better guys. And I was absolutely astonished to see that he was this much better than David DeCastro in so many areas. So again, I'm going to tell you that I believe that this card will perform better than David DeCastro for the most part for most people. I know, astonishing, but that's just the way this game rolls and that's why we do this series. So let's move on to the final comparison. And this one just blew me away, to be completely honest with you, because I know Jari Evans is definitely one of the best right guards in the game, and I was really surprised to see that he was going for all the way down at 6,000 coins, because he is money at just about absolutely everything. He is up against, in, com in this comparison, he's going up against Luis Vasquez, 87 overall right guard for 50,000 coins. Jari Evans, 6,000. So it's about, what, nine times as expensive, roughly nine to 10 times, somewhere in that range, as expensive for the Luis Vasquez. And again, I think a lot of this just has to do with the fact that people really want to have a, for whatever reason, they really want to have an elite card. And I don't get it. Personally, I want just the cards that are better. And in this case, I don't think you can even make an argument that Jari Evans is not better than Luis Vasquez. 
Look at the numbers, guys. Look at the numbers. He's better in absolutely everything other than awareness where he's only one behind. That is insane. I was just, like I said, I was shocked to see the price difference on these cards. 96 strength for Jari Evans, 95 run block strength, 98 pass block strength, 95 pass block footwork. Guys, this isn't even close. It's not even close. He's 10 better in pass block footwork. He's five better in impact block, four better in run block strength, four better in pass block strength, four better in acceleration. It's just, it's a blowout. Jari Evans is significantly better than Luis Vazquez. I don't know what the hell they're putting in to make it so that Luis Vazquez is somehow higher overall than Jari Evans, but they're off their rockers if they think Jari Evans isn't better. He flat out is better. Absolutely one of the best budget cards that you can find in this entire game. If you take him and Waneri, you take one of them and put them over at the other guard position, you're going to have a beastly duo at your guards. I'm telling you, you are going to make a ton of people pissed off that you're only spending 7,500 coins between the two of them, whereas they're spending, what, 110,000 on their guards if they have uh, any, either of these two cards that we had here, and that is just a blow away. It's not even close, so I absolutely love these cards. I hope that you guys are going to try them out. I want to hear in the comment section below if you guys test them out. I want to hear what you guys think of all these cards. Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's video, I know it went a little bit long, but I, I really want to go into these and uh, detail why I think these cards are better and why it's important that you look at these attributes before you look at just the overall number on the card. So, like I said, if you learned something, please be sure to press that like button. If you enjoyed the video, also press the like button. And if you could, guys, please share this video. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it if you would. Let's let people know that they do not need to spend so much on cards to have fun in Mutt. You can have an awesome team for way less than other people are spending. You really, really can if you do it the right way. So thank you guys for watching. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel because we will be doing a comparison like this for every single position. And I really think you guys are going to learn a lot about how to build an extremely quality budget squad team early in Mutt. And again, we'll be doing another one of these later in the year once the prices change on some of these cards so that you guys can stay up to date. And uh, we're always going to be on the cutting edge of putting together an awesome budget squad team if you guys pay attention to my channel. So thank you guys again. I do appreciate it. And I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.